Child Abuse Prevention Unit says the majority of sex abuse victims are girls. The Director of Trade predicts gas prices could go up again soon and four individuals fined in the 2009 trespassing case. I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. Have you paid your mapping bill? The 10th of the month is disconnection. Upon disconnection, visit Mappin's main office. You will be required to pay off your balance and the reconnection fee. Reconnections will be done within 72 hours. So, avoid getting disconnected. Pay your Mappin bill on time. Because life is better with Mappin. Introducing the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz has joined with Ashley Furniture, the number one selling home furnishings brand in America, to bring you the most extraordinary furniture selection at unbeatable prices. It's now easier than ever before to find that perfect furniture piece for your home. And what's more, you can add that special touch with the right accent piece from our range of designer accessories from Ashley. Create the perfect look for your home with the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. Visit the new Ashley Gallery at our Roseau store. When life moves fast, you need something to keep up with you. That's why you need the MyLime app. Remember the days of lining up to top up your phone? Well, not anymore. Now you can top up to start talking the night away. How about those pesky bills for postpay? If you'd like to look at your entire bill, press download. Do you have that friend that always spams you for phone credit? Let's send them some credit. Need to post your selfies online? How about getting a data bolt on? Using the MyLime app takes less than 10 seconds. Now go forth and text, WhatsApp, and watch videos. My life, my way, my lime. Time has come. Time for passion, for friends. Time to share. It's KFC Cricket time. Live the ICC Cricket World Cup 2015 and gear up for greatness with KFC and Pepsi. Purchase your KFC Cricket Time meal with delicious chicken pieces, sides and a refreshing Pepsi. And accumulate coupons to win a free Cricket World Cup inspired t-shirt. It's KFC Cricket Time! So good! First stop, statistics from the Child Abuse Prevention Unit indicate that the majority of child sex abuse victims are girls. The figures show that there were 170 reported child abuse cases in general in 2014. As you can see, most of the child abuse victims were between the ages of 11 to 15, followed by those between the ages of 6 to 10 years. Of these 170 child abuse cases, 135 were sexual abuse cases. 130 of the sexual abuse victims reported were girls, while the other five victims were boys. With so much abuse going on, there has been concern that some agencies were not reporting as they should, but officials say the collaboration is getting better, even if there is still a long way to go. We have moved up a step from where we were. Um, we have definitely increased support from the CID. Um, greater public awareness on child abuse matters. A lot more people are reporting and coming to us about the issue. Also... There's increased support by the general public in dealing with child abuse matters. We have had success in finding homes, in terms of finding placement for children who have um, been abused. And also, this another success is that we have the home for children at risk, which is chances. So in case that we don't get um, foster placement immediately, we can place them at the institution in GMIT in the meantime that we look for foster care placement. In other news, teachers, parents and students are being taught how to deal with different types of assault situations. The training is being provided through a child assault prevention program, CAP, being piloted here. Under the program, target groups are taught practical skills to prevent, avoid or deal with assault situations including verbally emotional and especially physical assault, which includes sexual assault. The focus has been on Roseau and Goodwill Primary Schools. We first work with the adults to bring that uh, broad uh, framework for them. Then we start going into the classrooms two weeks later where uh, free, a, a team of three people each, uh, those of us, 45 of us who have been trained, we go in the classrooms and um, we spend an hour with the children in a session in a class where we teach them about their rights to be safe, strong and free and different uh, practical ways and means that they can uh, prevent, avoid, or deal with assault situations, different types of assault situations. Uh, and then we spend half an hour with them 
in the hallway in a private uh, review time where they just come and tell us how they felt about the session and anything else they want to tell us. Fontaine says schools are required to report more when they are aware of children being assaulted. Children and youth who have been through the program have higher self-esteem and are also better equipped to deal with bullying. And in fact, when we do it with the children, there are three role plays that are broken down in two pieces each. So the first one is a bullying situation uh, by a peer person in school. And it, the first role play shows the child being bullied and the child doesn't know what to do about it. But giving the second role play teaches the child what you do about it when a bully comes up to you and approaches you. So each of the role plays show the children um, how they usually are and what they should be doing in this situation. So hopefully the bullying can also be reduced. The Child Assault Prevention Program CAP is funded by the Canadian government through the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives and UNICEF in Barbados. CAP is a component of the Child Friendly Schools Initiative. And drivers are experiencing the lowest fuel prices in four years, but the Director of Trade says gas prices could go up again soon. All petroleum products are governed by the Supplies Controls Act. This allows government to use a particular formula for the calculation of prices of petroleum products, including gasoline, diesel, kerosene, and cooking gas. What we do, and which we find to be the most prudent thing to do, uh, to give the most accurate price to the, to the consumer, um, and also in accordance with the act itself which speaks to what they call community benefit um, we use what we call a mean of um, of Caribbean postings. So we do not use the acquisition price of that of the petroleum product by the by the uh, importer, but instead we look to postings. So for now we use petrotrin postings, uh, most especially when the uh, when the, the the petroleum products come from within the CARICOM region. Uh, and the petrotrin is the petroleum company of Trinidad and Tobago, really. Caribbean states normally give preference to petroleum products from Trinidad's Petrotrin because of a CARICOM agreement. When Trinidad cannot supply, fuel is imported from the Gulf Coast and that can affect fuel prices locally. On Monday, the retail price of gasoline dropped to $10.28 per gallon and diesel to $10.01 per gallon. These prices apply at all gas service stations. Walter says while drivers are enjoying reduced prices, it has implications for oil producing countries. But with the oil producing countries, they, they, some of them are suffering um, tremendously, uh, such as our, our dear sister uh, country Venezuela. That being taken into consideration, um, I believe that there will be uh, in the very near future um, a very slow but sure um, increase um, in, the, in the price of fuel on the market. So I think we should, to some extent, get ourselves ready you know, for that. Okay, I know we do not want to preempt anything, but at this OPEC meeting in November, do you expect them to consider the plight of oil producing countries? I would not want to to, to preempt that. I, I do not know uh, what their considerations are going to be and, and what the agenda will be for that for that particular meeting. I would prefer um, wait anxiously um, to hear what they have to say and see if that impact will uh, will be uh, beneficially or positively felt uh, by the Dominican consumer. Mm -hmm. Walter says government has done a lot to reduce its tax on petroleum products, especially gas prices. The last time that there was a very serious hike in the prices, the government removed um, practically all, all means of income to themselves um, that was on petroleum products. So for example, the 3% the um, um, service charge was removed um, by government you know, um, due, due to, during the price hike um, and all to, to benefit the, the consumer. We know that you know, products that are price controlled, uh, most especially uh, the petroleum products, are supposed to be that way so that they could be of interest to the community. And then so the issue here is to try to keep it as affordable as possible. In more news now, a Barbadian entrepreneur is on island teaching locals how to successfully attract investment in their projects.
Adrian Reed is the founder of Vision Funder, a crowdfunding mechanism in which money can be raised by donation to assist with projects requiring financing. Reed is facilitating a workshop called The Nuts and Bolts of Crowdfunding, organized by the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation, particularly for people in the creative industry. The, the Caribbean has no shortage of ideas and talent. Um, large brains, big ideas, and many times they're hindered from coming to fruition to having really global impact. And the thing is, that if you love a people, if you love something, you get frustrated by not seeing the thing you love grow and prosper and expand. Crowdfunding has the, the benefit in that, especially at early stage, it does not require equity from you, nor debt which in your very early stage of business is very, very important because you need to manage cash flow to grow your business from seed stage um, to growth stage to plateau stage and then on onwards. Vision Funder was created to alleviate poor access to finance for projects or products. Geared specifically for the Caribbean people, for Caribbean artists and business persons, not only in the, in the creative sector, but also in agro-processing, engineering, education. Once you have a business, an idea, and you need to raise a money to see it come off the ground, we create this platform for that very reason. So in 2012, um, entrepreneurs were able to raise $2.7 billion for their projects. And if I had to show you on the map how much the Caribbean received from that crowdfunding, it is infinitesimal. It's very, very, very small. <laughs> and um, I said we need to correct that. Before someone decides to crowdfund a product or launch a project, they must first start crowdfunding campaign. We look at the pre-launch all the marketing you have to do before you actually go on the platform. I've, I've known of people, friends of mine, who have tried crowdfunding on different platforms and they have not done as well as they would like, mainly because not the idea wasn't, wasn't good, but because the planning that went into it was poor. They assumed that, oh, simple, just go on and talk about my stuff and things happen. No, it doesn't work. There has to be a lot of marketing or thought that goes into your campaign before you even begin to talk about um, going on the platform. So if you look at the post-campaign things, things you do after the campaign, after you've um, hopefully, you know, spend your 30, 45 days running your campaign, what do you do afterward? Meantime, the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation has a three-year period to implement what they call the five pillars. The development platforms which CPAF will operate on are product development, education, showcase events, regional youth challenge, and financial support. CPAF has brought people involved in the creative arts sector together for two days to attempt to realize its financial support platform. Its intention is to bring together the diverse cultures using the uniqueness of our music and theatrical performances providing platforms for our OECS performing artists to hone their talent in our own backyard, to prepare ourselves to take advantage of the export opportunities in the wider CARICOM and internationally. Please note, we are not a promotions agency. We are concerned with the development of the performing arts, both music and theatrical, as well as the support services necessary for artists to succeed. The Dominica Coalition of Service Industries is a business support organization which aims to foster growth in the service sector. Its executive director says a partnership with CPAF can enhance the formalization of the creative subsector. One of our primary objectives is resource mobilization, finding monies from here, there, and everywhere for, for various initiatives that will develop our membership, the service sector on a whole. So we view this workshop as, as very important as it equips our members, who, some of which are represented here, with information on how to secure much needed funding for the development of their businesses. The trade director considers crowdfunding a transparent means of financing and has encouraged those creative minds to embrace it as a lifesaver. In recent years, this funding platform has become increasingly popular to raise the necessary finance to fund creative projects. 
These platforms, it has been reported, has raised approximately $1.5 billion and funded over 1 million projects. I'm elated that it is now taking root in the Caribbean region. In Dominica, um, although there are specific uh, financial institutions which feel for the young entrepreneurs, there is, uh, that is not the same, for example, where creatives in particular are concerned. They are seen, as my colleague before me said, to be high risk. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the lionfish may have met its match. More when we come back. It's March Madness at Quartz. Get all for nothing and nothing to pay for 30 days. Plus, get mad deals all over the store. And it gets even better with one crazy deal every single day. So Quartz is the place to be all month long for new deals every day in the biggest March Madness promotion. Don't miss it. It's going to be And don't waste time, eh? You know we deliver all over Dominica. The customer are waiting for their product. All right? Delivery from Muslim store. Anybody home? Whether you rent or you have your own home, the Muslim store is the place to get what you need. We deliver. Cash is is the one-of-a-kind bond shop in Dominica. We'll trade all your old and used appliances for cash, grant loans applicable to the value of your vehicle and other appliances. A community service-oriented organization actively involved in building communities and empowering the young while partnering with social groups for nation building. So come to Cash with Dominica on the corner of Stibble Street and St. Johnson's Avenue, Pottersville, Rose. Call us today at 440-5555 Check us out on Facebook or email dominica at cashwiz.com. Thanks for staying with us. Four individuals have been fined over $5,000 in a 2009 trespassing case brought by businessman Reneth Alexis. Lorian Graham spoke with attorney for Reneth Alexis, Heather Evans, and has this report. Severa McKenzie, Atherton Martin, Joan Etienne, and Frederick Barron were found guilty of trespassing on the property of Reneth Alexis following a court decision on December 22, 2014. The incident, which took place on December 5, 2009, at the Blair Court Development Property in Savon Pie, occurred when six individuals, along with others, were accused of trespassing. In October 2010, Alexis was charged with possession of a firearm in an attempt to persuade the individuals of his property. In December of that same year, the court ruled in favor of Alexis, finding the individuals guilty of trespassing. Prior to the trial, two of the accused, Dr. Clayton Schillingford and Floyd Capitole, opted to go through mediation and admitted they were wrong. Alexis accepted a small settlement and the matter was discontinued for those two individuals. The matter continued in 2014 when the other four were brought to court. Damages of nominal and aggravated trespassing were brought against Mackenzie and Mate for $6,500 for entering two of the villas. Etienne and Barron were charged $6,000 for nominal and aggravated trespassing on the property. And child fund partner staff and national office staff have been rethinking practices in disciplining children. Participants were busy Thursday at a workshop on conscious discipline, teaching the best ways to relate to children without having to physically or verbally abuse them. The workshop, which is suitable for parents and teachers, explores alternative strategies to spanking and verbal abuse. Staff of Child Fund Caribbean are required to sign the ethical behavior towards children policy so as not to violate their human dignity. The director of Child Fund Caribbean believes all schools should sign that policy. And finally, one of the predators causing concern for the fisheries division, fishermen and the Water Sports Association could be more vulnerable than we first thought. The lionfish was believed to have few predators, meaning not many fish eat them. But we have some evidence that perhaps this is changing. At one time, local fishermen were being encouraged to hunt down the predatory lionfish, believed to be a threat to marine life in the Caribbean. The Water Sports Association said there was a strong possibility that the lionfish could wipe out our fish supplies. There were efforts by local divers to wipe them out as well. 
The fisheries division said the invasive species could have a devastating impact on Dominica's fishing industry. Channel 5 News has received some video by Lionfish University in Little Cayman showing a grouper and an eel both eating lionfish. Perhaps with the local effort to eradicate the predator from our waters and these predators, we could see further reduction in the lionfish population and ultimately have balance restored in our waters. Coming up next, the sporting highlights. First off in softball cricket, the Big Edge Financial Services National Softball Cricket League bowls off this Sunday and its coordinator is calling for more support for the game, particularly from players themselves. Heston Charles spoke to Channel 5 News on Thursday ahead of the tournament's grand opening, noting some challenges affecting the National League annually. One of the challenges that we have is for the opening you find teams don't show up. And this is one of the things that makes sponsors proud, to see that teams can show up and hear from the sponsors because during the opening we're going to have an address from the sponsors and we would like for the teams to show up and show up in uniforms. Often enough you find for, for the grand opening teams don't show up for that but they do show up for their league games. So this is one of the challenges that we have and also late appearances. Charles added that softball cricket is already widely appreciated around the region and it is time for Dominica to get more involved. Softball is one of the biggest sports in the region. I mean in Dominica for, on a domestic level we are not playing it as often as we should but in other countries as St. Lucia, Trinidad, St. Vincent, Grenada, softball is a big thing and it has been played you know, among some of the most elite clubs in those countries and hence the reason why you know, we have to get more interest in it and it also complements the hardball. So guys who are you know, looking forward to keep their form in the hardball league can engage in playing softball so they can keep their form in the hardball league. Also guys who have retired you know, from the hardball can keep playing the sport by participating in the, in the softball. They used to call it windball, but we call it softball, softball league. We just want to ensure that softball is kept alive in Dominica. I, I, I understand that young people these days are, are, are gravitating towards activities that is, you know, is not recommended for, for young people. We need them to you know, gravitate to positive things, things that will, where they can use their energy in a positive way. And this is one of the reasons why I'm so adamant about, you know, spearheading the softball tournament because I know this is one of the things that keeps our young people away from the roadside, keep them away from anything illegal. The league will bowl off at Linda Park in Goodwill and competition will continue every weekend among 20 teams in two zones. On to local cricket, the Digicel Augustus Gregoire Premier League continues this weekend with games at the Benjamins Park and Windsor Park Sports Stadium. Mariner Blasters play on Saturday through to Sunday against Dubla United Stars in Portsmouth and newcomers Fast Car Summits will take on the Dominica Cricket Academy at the stadium. Meanwhile, the Fort Young Hotel Dominica Intermediate League will continue on Saturday with the Grassroots Academy taking on Ian Pinard Hurricanes at the Botanical Gardens. At Dubla, Najiko Northern Stars go up against Maho United. On Sunday, games return to the Botanical Gardens with Sunrise Cottages Summarize taking on Sajiko Somersets. Fast Car Summits First Division team will meet the Gladiators at Dubla. And Dominican athletes will have yet another chance to qualify for the St. Kitts Character Games in April when the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association hosts the 2015 National Junior Championships on Sunday at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium. Athletes from around the island will compete in under 15, under 18 and under 20 boys and girls categories. They will race in under 18 and under 20 100 meter, 200, 400, 800 800 and 1500 meter, 4 by 100 meter and 4 by 400 meter, as well as long jump, high jump, triple jump, shot put, javelin, and discus. The open girls and under 18 boys, 3000 meter, open boys, 5000 meter, under 15 boys and girls, 100 meter, 300 and 1200 meter, long jump, and shot put will also be on show. So far, three athletes, namely shot put and discus thrower Josh Stousset, javelinist and shot putter Keon 
Burton and shot-putter Rahim Joseph have already qualified for the Games. And on to football, Petro Caribe Point Michel and Seinman All-Stars continue to dominate the DFA National First Division League, leading the tables in Group 1 and 3. More from Gerald George in this report. Petro Caribe Point Michel has made it five wins in as many matches to remain unbeaten in Group 1 as action continued in the DFA Division 1 League. In the first match of a doublehead at the Buffet State playing field last night, Point Michel defeated Gully Dream Team 1 0. Brian Nelsi scored in the first half of play for Point Michel. In the second match of the night, Signman All Stars hammered Starling and Son St. Joseph 7 1 to record their fourth win in as many matches in Group 3. Terry Jerome and Ryan Matthew both found the back of the nets twice for Signman, with one each coming from Kimon John Baptist, Junior Lovell, and Alison Lovell. The league continues tonight with a doublehead at the Buffet State playing field, with RC Doctors taking on Kingfield Football Club at 5 p.m., to be followed by Element Agencies LA Stars versus Jays Limited Grand Four Young Boys at 7 p.m. This is Gerald George, PRO Dominica Football Association. Your weather report is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carreto Joseph. Satellite imagery showed some low level clouds which moved across the island chain throughout the course of the day. This resulted in partly cloudy to cloudy conditions. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers across the island chain throughout the course of the day. The Douglas Charles Airport and the Kenfield Airport recorded just under one millimeter of rainfall today. Conditions for tonight, fair to partly cloudy and breezy with a few scattered showers. Tomorrow, apart from some early morning showers, fair to partly cloudy conditions and also breezy conditions can be expected. Sea conditions, moderate to rough in open water with waves peaking near 10 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise some caution. The next three days, apart from some early morning showers, fair to partly cloudy conditions and breezy conditions as well can be expected. Fair to partly cloudy conditions expected across the northern and central portion of the island chain with some cloudy conditions and some showers across the extreme southern portion. Some breezy conditions can also be expected. Clear skies expected in New York and Beijing Partly cloudy conditions in Miami and London, and some showers in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.19 a.m. and set at 6.14 p.m. For updated information, visit our website, artweather.gov.dm, or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for another weather broadcast. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. The Child Abuse Prevention Unit says the majority of child sex abuse victims are girls. The Director of Trade predicts gas prices could go up again soon. And four individuals fined in a 2009 trespassing case. Send your questions and comments to news at mapping2k4.com. For instant access to the news, you can download the TurnUp767 app. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.